Hey guys, welcome back to another More With Mars video. Welcome back to another renovation video. That's right, we are renovating our front room or just trying to revamp it a little bit. We are turning this room into a playroom. As you guys know, this room is kind of underutilized. We only keep Luna in here. And we already have this baby gate set up, so Brittany and I wanted to bring the kids from upstairs in their uh, playroom because we have other ideas for that whole upstairs and that's coming in a later video. But we are going to do something special with this wall right here, and we are getting rid of the couch that's in here. We are going to also paint, add some batten, and we're gonna make this nice accent wall here. That is mainly my job, and then Brittany's gonna come in and organize all the kids' toys. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and we will see you guys in just a minute. So I also want to add right here, if you guys know why this paint peeled off so easily, please drop it down in the comments because honestly, that was the first time that this has ever really happened to me and I didn't really know what else to do other than peel it off and try to restart with a new base coat of paint and go from there. But if you guys know why I did that, please leave it in the comments below. everything taken off of the top and the bottom talking about the molding pieces and also the square molding that was in here now if you guys notice most of the paint came off when I was working on this so I ended up using my like a stiff multi-purpose tool and yeah it's kind of wore out but I ended up using this scraping most of the paint off I got to here and this left side, it was fine. It did not peel off as bad. So I'm gonna to try to leave that and see how it ends up coming out. What I need to focus on is especially against the batten piece that's gonna go right here. So hopefully that will square off and into the batten. But other than that, I have my top line marked. I'm gonna go ahead and put that board up to give me a good idea of how high it needs to be, or if it needs to be a little bit higher or lower. I'm kind of, the way I'm looking at it now is it needs to be Four inches higher that way it gives it a nice tall look and the ceiling kind of I don't know four feet at the top maybe because um, I'm sitting at five feet so maybe I, if I go six I leave it three feet at the top and that might be a little bit better but I'm gonna run out here and cut this piece because I'm gonna have to cut it at an angle because they did not have no 13 and a half foot pieces 
<laughs> so I'm gonna go out here and cut this piece up and then trim it up, put it up here, and I'm gonna show you guys kinda where I want this to go. So right here in the corner, I'm gonna to have to cut out just a little bit right here on the corner. That way it fits nice and even inside of here. Um, what I also thought about doing was seeing if I could get this to be almost high enough to be level and it would still be able to cover. And I think that I'm gonna be able to do that. Alright guys, so once you start to get your baseboard down, you want to make sure that it is nice and level. And then from there, what I did was used a small other piece of trimming and I cut both of them at a 45 degree angle and used some wood filler to make that seem seamless. And it would be one solid piece of wood or one solid piece of baseboard. And you will be able to tell that you cannot see it at the end of this video. Also, right after you get done putting your baseboard down, you wanna measure your entire wall one more time. That way you get the exact spacing. I went ahead and put the three pieces of batten up and then measured out to get the exact measurements of what I wanted it to be. And it come out to be about roughly two feet, like two feet apart. From there on out, what you wanna do is just measure each piece of batting or wood and cut the fit. And then once you get done with that, it's pretty much Put it up there, put some adhesive on the back of the piece of wood and nail it in. So you guys, I'm getting ready to start painting here, but I wanted to show you guys what I used to get ready to start painting. I ended up using frog tape and some clear masking paper to go around everywhere to kind of protect the walls, but that really didn't go over too well in a few spots because I just completely missed. But you guys, y'all will see that in a little bit because it's kind of very obvious. But I wanted to talk to you guys real quickly about what I also used. I used some paintable caulk to fill in the edges of the woods. That way, whenever you went to paint, you didn't have cracking that would be up against your wall and your boards. Also, if you guys noticed in the middle at the bottom, you can see where I used the wood filler. And by the end of the video, you will also see that it is very much seamless. It's also in the top right.
So I am about to do some touch up work and I think one of our most asked questions is what are the color of our walls in our house? So everything besides of course what we've painted is passive by Sherwin Williams. It's like and the perfect gray, light gray color. We'll have to What's that? clean our floors, but if here is the actual numbers for you guys. Which one? That one? It's 7064 passive. We had to do a little extra work because where the molding was left a line. I got my big sander out, sanded it all the way down again, and then now I went back over it with a thicker latex primer paint kind yeah. of, and it covered it completely. So now the only thing I have to do is just go back into it. Now I made that mistake and didn't catch it when I was painting. You couldn't see it though. You couldn't see it when I was doing... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's not even go into that. We're not going into that. That was a, all right. I, I made two mistakes this video. The first mistake was using that spray gun because it got everywhere. Two. Wait, on the plus side though, it did it go was by so fast. Quick. I was just yeah, like, it did. It did a really good it just made first a coat. Mess. And it just made a mess. But this part, like some of the things, just didn't really look good. So I told Brittany, I was like, I'm going to completely redo it, take everything off, and do it again. And that's just me being particular. So we just need to repaint it. So that's why you guys see the random white on there. But this is the part where I'm gonna go in with that passive where some of the paint leaked through from the spray gun, but just not bad. It's just a little little corners. leakage over there and just kind of go along this edge right here just so it's like a clean, nice Straight paint line. line. Yeah. Alright, so this is the part of the video where I go through all of the kids' toys and books and organize everything. And this part is also going to be super sped up because here in a minute when you guys kind of see what we did when we started bringing everything downstairs to the new playroom, it ended up not being like this at all. So what I mean by that is we brought this huge cubicle down and we ended up not liking it in that space and realized something smaller and closer to the ground would be more beneficial for the kids and especially the younger kids in the playroom so even though I'm showing you guys like organizing the books and everything in the cubicle this is not how it ended up being we ended up doing something completely different and rearranging it completely different so I still wanted to include this footage because we still are organizing all the toys and bringing everything down um, but here in a second I'm going to show you guys a b-roll on the final result of the playroom All right, so here is the almost final result. 
of the playroom and I'll talk about final here in a second, but for the most part, it is done. Oh my goodness. I think this project took a lot longer than expected and not because of the batten that Frank did, the board and batten, not because of that, but because I was so indecisive about the arrangement of this room, organizing it. You guys saw previously in this video, the big cubicle, and we went with the two smaller ones. So there's two more things that are actually gonna go into this playroom to make it finally done. One being a rug that is gonna go right here. It is a ruggable rug, the same one as this one, but they are made as they're ordered. So it won't get here until another week, maybe less than a week. They have to make it first and then it takes two weeks to ship. So I ordered it about a week and a half ago and goes custom. I kind of hoping that it would be here by then, but it's okay that it's not. I'll insert a picture to show you guys, which I'm so excited about it because it will definitely tie in the rest of the room. It will tie in the board and bat and it'll tie in like different colors and everything. And you know, I feel like rugs just make a room regardless so I'm really excited for that to get here and it's washable too so it's gonna be perfect in the playroom and then the last thing that I want to get is some big picture frames so let's try to picture the rug let's picture five picture frames up here camera's not focusing up oh, there we go so picture five picture frames up here the so one picture for all of our kids and then I was even thinking about maybe trying to find some kind of artwork to go on this wall or even this wall but to be honest you guys can probably tell from like my style I don't like to put a lot of things on the wall so I try to keep it as a minimum as possible but we did put these floating shelves in here this used to go above my desk in the office area but we're gonna put cabinets up there instead so I put them in here plants We'll get perfect lighting with this window and it's high enough where obviously the kids can't mess with it and we can put some other things on there some artwork or something but for the most part the playroom is completely done. And I do wanna get some kind of like organizer for all of the Barbie stuff because right now it's just kind of thrown in these storage bins, but it's not a big deal. We have all the bins that fit here perfectly. This worked out great because now Scarlett can reach everything as well. It's at the perfect length where the kids can play with all of the toys and reach everything and it's at a safer height. So I'm really happy that we decided to put these two cubicles in here and it went perfect on this wall. It's not gonna take away from it like the other one did and I really like how that turned out. And also I love that they have this window right here so it brings in a lot of light. We can hear the kids from the kitchen and the living room because we're mainly downstairs. We do have this baby gate but eventually I think we're gonna get some kind of doors to go right up here. And this will go too because again, we're gonna have the rug but we just have it in here right now for Scarlett's thing. She's kind of getting out of this baby stage and wants to play with like more of like the bigger toys so it works out great that you know this we don't really need this anymore and then of course we have the barbie dream house over here but overall we love how the playroom turned out i am in love with this batten wall we have some more ideas on using batten throughout the house so i'm really excited about that and we'll definitely be showing you guys more projects if we do but yeah that is probably gonna wrap it up for this playroom video i'm filming this super early in the morning or else I would show you guys my face. But I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in our next one. Bye guys.